Hi everyone, welcome to part 2. Okay, Califman has just played bishop b8. So if I'm well the answer, the rook takes b8. And now comes rook takes d7. And in this position, with a strong rook on the 7th rank and a centralized knight against black's fairly ineffective bishop here on g7, although it's got this long diagonal, it's not really aimed at any targets or anything like that. So uh, white has a large advantage going into the end game. And play continued b5, now knight d6, very nice move, attacking f7, and uh, simultaneously b5 if the rook comes back to defend f7. And Van Willy continued a4, so now came c takes b5, c takes b5, knight takes f7, rook e8, king f1, stopping rook e1. Now bishop c3, knight h6 check, forcing king h8, and now g4. And in this position, white has won a pawn and consolidated. And now he sets up mating threats on the black king with the combined force of rook, knight, and before long, his g-pawn also. Furthermore, it's important to note that he doesn't hurry to exploit his material advantage, adhering closely to principles we looked at earlier in the series about not hurrying in the endgame when your advantage is sustainable. The end game from here was long and drawn out, but I'll show it to you in case you're curious to see how it went. There are a few more interesting talking points. So a takes b3, a takes b3, rook f8, now g5, rook e8, knight f7 check, king g8, knight h6 check, king h8, now h4, b4, and again this checking maneuver. Um, m these may well have been to get time on the clock because they don't achieve much else and Califan keeps playing it so the only conclusion is that it's, uh, to get time on the clock here he plays it again and now f4 this should be 2 and again this maneuver and now king f3 bishop c3 and again the same maneuver king g4 bishop g7 now rook b7 attacking the b-pawn so bishop c3 and the same again and now f5 which a decisive breakthrough g takes f5 check knight takes f5 bishop d2 and now rook d7 which is nice and accurate playing instead h5 allows black into the game after rook g8 it's pressure on the g5 pawn so before h5 is played the bishop must be forced off to c1 h6 diagonal which uh, rook d7 begins. After bishop c1 comes rook d1, bishop b2, and only now h5. So rook g8, knight h6, rook e8, and now a nice tactical shot. If you want to try and spot it, then stop the video now. Rook d8 is the move that Califman played, which is a great idea because it results in an easily winning minor piece endgame thanks in particular to the inactive black king because our rook takes d8 is forced and now comes of course knight f7 check king g7 and knight takes d8 and from here it's a matter of technique play continued bishop c3 king f5 bishop d2 knight e6 check king f7 knight f4 king g7 and knight d5 dominating the bishop king f7 h6 king g8 and f6 check king h8 and now knight e4 and knight g4 was in fact stronger but with such a position there are many ways to win and it's important to note too that playing instead g6 will be a blunder after h takes g6 check king takes g6 and bishop takes h6 but there's no king takes h6 or it's stalemate and if the king doesn't take then black will be able to draw so black can draw if g6 is played too quickly alternatively king g4 also fails the bishop takes g5 and again black will be able to draw so it's you know very important to keep an eye out for such moves when you have a winning endgame position so knight e4 anyway is what was played in the game now came bishop c1, king g4, king g8, knight f6 check, king h8 because the king's tied to defending the h pawn, but it's completely lost for black. After knight d5, bishop d2, king h5, 
king g8 and g6, Van Wele resigned. The point is that after h takes g6 and king takes g6, and for example bishop e1, now h7 check, king h8, knight e7, and any bishop move, so bishop g3, now comes knight c6, and black has no way to stop the knight from coming to f7 to d deliver mate as it can get there via both e5 and d8 and the bishop can't cover both of them if bishop c7 it's mate and 7 with knight takes b4 and bishop d6 or any other bishop move now again knight c6 and after bishop c7 b4 and the bishop must allow the knight through for example bishop b6 knight d5 bishop c7 and knight f7 his mate. So it was a fine example of endgame play from the great grandmaster Alexander Kalafman. So be sure to take care which pieces you exchange off when heading into the endgame and take careful stock of the position when deciding which pieces will be more valuable to have on the board. So I hope you enjoyed this segment. Please leave any comments or thoughts. Thanks very much.